What's up guys? I'm Brad Ellingsworth. This is my YouTube channel, Coach E. It's devoted to all things football, especially being simple and playing fast. Guys, do me a favor. At any point in time in this video, you enjoy the content, hit the like button, drop a comment, and definitely subscribe. Uh, today, no X's and O's talk. Um, today I want to talk about my struggles as a young and inexperienced uh, head football coach. Um, it was filled with adversity. Um, some stuff I want to get off my chest in terms of I think some of my struggles can help some of you guys. And I'm going to try not to be long-winded, but um, it's probably going to be a long-winded presentation going through some of these things and elaborating on them. Um, one, one thing i found is that people a lot of times like to put out there the things that they do well and their successes. Um, I don't think a lot of people want to put their struggles and their failures out. So that's what I'm going to do today, and hopefully maybe you can take something from it. Um, so I'm going to go through each point. I kind of, I kind of wrote some bullets to kind of keep myself on, uh, on task and, and straight. Um, but I'm going to start with, uh, the first topic of conversation, the first struggle, which was, um, COVID. So, you know, I'm 28 years old, was hired as a, uh, you know, coach in, in April, um, had, had our season, and, and, and COVID was not the way that I thought I was going to go into this thing. So here in Delaware, we had to play with masks um, and just all kinds of other craziness. I mean, the practice plans, we there were certain practice plans we were only allowed to be in pods for 10 minutes at a time. Uh, water, the kids had to provide their own water, not only just um, at practice, but during the game as well. We could not share community water jugs. Um, we had to have hand sanitizing stations. Above and at all of that, though, one of the hardest things was the school that I coach at, you know, was fully remote, right? So kids did not come in the school building for school. So this caused all kinds of issues, especially uh, I'm, I coach at a county technical school. So we have kids living in different parts of the county. And we used to, in a normal year, run a transportation bus that drops at different hubs in different towns. But um, they didn't run the buses this year. There were state regulations on how many kids could be on a bus. And just because of that, they couldn't run them. So we probably had about 20 to 25 less kids in our program this year than normal. Um, I don't know what that equates to from a percentage standpoint, but I mean, transportation was tough. I mean, transportation was tough. And, you know, you were kind of at the mercy of, you, know, you want, you go into it wanting to have all these rules and, and, you know, having a run a consistent, tough program. But at the end of the day, these kids are dealing with real life right now. And you're kind of at the mercy of how they can get to practice. And thankfully, we didn't run into too many issues with that, uh, with the kids that could play. But it was a challenge. Um, I, I had kids working. And, and this is one thing I didn't understand. You know, they're supposed to be learning during the school day. But, you know, I've got seniors and juniors that are driving themselves to work. And they're getting off work and coming to practice. And, I mean, it, it, it's just, uh, it, was, it was tough. It was a challenge. It was certainly a challenge. Um, and, and here's the other deal is, you know, we were shut down. We played our first game of the year, so we practiced for four weeks, no scrimmages. Played our first game of the year um, and had a JV player uh, test positive and a JV coach test, well, he was kind of an in-between coach, test positive, and we got shut down for two weeks. We got shut down for two weeks, and... I can't even tell you how, how difficult that is when you're trying to get something rolling and you shut down for those two weeks. And the only way we communicated was over school gym. Yeah, I mean, I held Zoom and film sessions and things of that nature. But, I mean, it's not the same as getting repetitions, right? The repetition repetitions are the father of, of teaching. I mean, so, or mother or whatever. But... But it's not out on the field getting reps, right? And so 
When we came back, we missed week two and week three. When we came back in week four, you know, the team we played had not been shut down all year. And, and trust me, by no means, that is not me making an excuse. Um, but I, but what I am telling you is it, gave, it, it, it was a struggle. I mean, I was staying up like, how in the world are we going to play this football game? We only played one game at, at game speed. And then we were shut down. And, and so we, we, you know, had to take temperatures every practice. It was a mess. It was a struggle. So, but but I'm, I want to do that one first to kind of get that one out of the way because I'm hoping that, that that's an asterisk and that that one is in a league of its own. And hopefully after this year, for the most part, um, we're not going to have to deal with a lot of that stuff. Now, on to the, the meat and potatoes. So, I'm going to tell you this one thing. And if you're an aspiring head coach... One thing I learned this year is you better love the game. You better love coaching. And you're aspiring to be a head coach because, because you, you want the title of being a head coach. It's going to chew you up and spit you out really quick and really fast. Um, because, I mean, you, you can notice, right? If you look up here on the board, there's nothing really about X's and O's up here. Um, and it's one thing, like, when I was a coordinator, I never got, I never realized, you know, my head coach at the time when I was a coordinator and, and a position coach at other schools, I didn't see all this stuff. I didn't see it. And the amount of the burden that, that lays on your shoulder, you better love it or it's going to chew you up and, and spit you out. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is school support. I, I thought... Because of our circumstances, our school support was all right. I thought I thought the school support was good, um, because everybody right now in this in this year is is just struggling to keep up. Um, school administration, all of us, all of us are, are are floundering trying to figure out how we proceed with our life as normal as possible. So, you know, this is one year where you know I kind of expected the school support to be a little. Hit and miss, although I will say I thought for the most part as a young guy I was supported pretty well. I'll be honest, the only concern I had was when, and you know, I'm going to be sitting down soon with our superintendent and, and kind of this is one thing I am going to voice. Um, the only concern I had was so we have our headsets that we've had at this school for eight years and they were, they were a problem. Last year, I was an assistant on the same team last year, and they really were hit and miss. They were really, really. There were there was one game last year where we didn't get them to work one and a half, so it was time for a new pair. So first game of the year, they don't work, and to be honest with you, they never really worked at any point in any game throughout the year. I mean, the last game we kind of got them ish working, but. Um, so I was told, I, I, I expressed my concerns, like, we need headsets. I mean, we got teams with huddle sideline and things of that nature. We don't have that. And now, we don't even have headsets. We don't even have a way to communicate. So I kind of felt like we're going into games deaf, dumb, and blind. And, and I, had, I had all these different response, game day responsibilities for my coaches in terms of communication and position watching. Um... That just never took place. This never took place because not one time throughout the year did we really have headsets at all. And, you know, I'm still kind of not sure where we're at with that. I mean, I was told to wait until the spring. So I don't know. I, well, we, but, you know, that is a concern of mine because, I mean, as you know, coaching football, I mean, we, we have to be able to transfer information and we have to be able to it's, that that communication is is extremely important. The next thing that was tough was, um, and this this is kind of divided. I don't teach at the school that I coach at, which is a which is an issue. Um, I'm hoping to remedy that soon. I, I teach at a middle school that's actually not even in the district that I coach in. It's only about 15 minutes down the road, so that's why I'm able to make practices and do some of those things. But keeping up with player grades um, was tough. Was tough. And I, I sent a couple mass emails out to the teachers at the building. 
I got some really nice responses and I got some responses from teachers that were just like, well, you need to figure out a way to do it yourself. We, we, we're busy enough. So again, I'm going back to any aspiring head coaches. Like this isn't stuff that I thought about. This isn't this isn't stuff when I thought about being head coach that I, I really thought about. But like, yeah, teachers told me like figure it out. Like you need to figure this out on your own. <clears throat> and and so I have a few of my assistants that are in the school. So I kind of charge some of them to it to help me out with it. Um, but that was a major concern and. We had several kids fail off the team, especially in this remote learning environment. I mean, grades are terrible. There's a record number of kids failing across the country, uh, let alone just our school. So the next item probably is the biggest, I'll be honest, probably is the biggest, uh, along with when we, when we kind of get down here and here. But um, the coaches, your coaches, um, this was, this was a blessing and a, and, and a struggle this year. Uh, just from support, some coaches really were supportive and, and, and some weren't, and some weren't. And, and this, this is some stuff that got addressed a little bit throughout the year and some, some, some stuff that's going to continue to get addressed this offseason. Um, commitment. Commitment. Commitment was a big one. Commitment was a big one. And, and my game, it was kind of a mixture with guys on my staff in terms of, you know, uh, time that they give. A lot of coaches, I don't think, quite understand the, the time that it takes to be successful. Um, you know, showing up to practice, beforehand to set up your your drills, coming to workouts, watching film, your position, um, things of that nature. I mean that those are some things that what some coaches had it and, and some didn't and that, that's gonna get addressed. It's also and like I said, start towards the end of the year, I started to address some of those things. And as a young guy, that was tough for me. It was tough for me. Um, but I, I stepped into that role um, a little bit more towards the end of the year. Um, and I, I'm not going to get into too big of details on this out of respect for him because I just had my first conversation with this coach the other day. Um, but I had a coach that was my defensive coordinator, my O-line and D-line coach, who decided mid-year that he couldn't coach anymore because of COVID. And <laughs> the, the week that he decided he couldn't coach – and, and, and he didn't pick this timing intentionally. I, I don't believe that. But just the timing was that week, we had to play the eventual Division One state champs in our state. And then after that, we had to play the conference champs, which th that, those state champs and the conference champs were all in the same conference. So they're two really good football teams, two of the best in the entire state. Um, obviously, one was a state champ this year. Um, you know, so... That thrust me into a position where I was the head coach, the offensive coordinator, and the defensive coordinator, and the O-line, and the D-line. I, I mean, it was I had a coach out for COVID at the time. I mean, it was – or had to quarantine. Uh, it, it, it was – it was tough. I mean, it was really, really difficult. And, again, not something that I pictured would be um, in this flowery image that I had in my head of, of being a head coach. Uh, professionalism, man. Like some coaches were really professional, and some coaches weren't. I brought in a, I brought in a lot of young guys this year, inexperienced guys. I mean, things like you know, not texting or or at least call. I did hire some coaches that don't work in a building, so I knew that sometimes practice attendance would would be an issue. But at the same time, just sometimes not showing up. Like you didn't send me a text. You didn't you didn't call me. That did get addressed at the end of the year. That got brought up in, in our last meeting. Like some of that stuff, man, that I just didn't think I was going to have to deal with. Um, you know, and, and listen, getting getting high school coaches is hard because this is here in Delaware. It's not like, you know, I make a, a, a $4,500 stipend, you know, so it's not really, you're not making a ton of money. You only got so many coaching positions. Uh, 
you know, and, and then you got to have guys, if they're not working in the building, you got to have guys that are available to make it to practice at 345, and that can be tough. Uh, delegate. This is one thing that uh, that I failed at, and and it is and, and it's on me, and I didn't put my coaches in good positions. I, I had these plans, you know, for them all, these, these grading sheets for them to, you know, grade their players and their positions and, uh, like I told, what you told you before, game day responsibilities and all these different things, especially those two were big, that because of those things that I just mentioned, the COVID, the quitting, the, the all this stuff, I just, it became so much that I ended up just internalizing and shouldering it all. Um, and I, I feel like that's probably something a lot of us do as head coaches. I don't know. You know, again, this is only my first year. But... I need to do a better job of delegating and trusting my guys, you know, and, and to be honest with you, I, I may see some improvement in some areas just from me showing some trust and me delegating in some areas. And I failed at that. I failed at that, especially towards the end of the year. Uh, I failed at it. I failed at it. I mean, to be honest, you know, we were already dealing with some issues with guys showing up to Sunday to, to, to our, our meetings. Uh, we had Sunday meetings and, you know, it would be me, pretty much. We'd have a quick meeting, and then I just kind of shouldered everything. I would be at the school seven hours on Saturday, seven hours on Sunday, game planning, scouting reports, laundry, all that stuff. And I'm going to get to all this down here, but I need to do a better job of delegating. And one problem I have was coming in as the head coach. I only coached at this school one year before this, and you know, some of these guys I didn't know or I didn't know well. I knew them, but I didn't know them well. And so one thing we're going to work on this all season is really bonding and building that friendship. You know, speaking of, we got a, a coach's party. I'm throwing a coach's party um, Saturday just just for pure because we need to be boys. I mean, I think bonding as a coaching staff is so important so that we have each other's back. Um, and it's just a lot of, you know, that is so important. I can't ever state that. So I'm hoping to pick that up. Uh, guys, I, I know I've been a little long-winded, but I'm just going to remind you, if any of this content you've been able to relate to, please click that like button, drop a comment, and, and subscribe so that we can kind of stay connected um, and you can keep uh, posted on, on the content that gets rolled out on the channel. Anyways, back to the conversation. Fundraising. I didn't realize how difficult fundraising would be. I didn't realize how, I mean, it's difficult, especially in this COVID. We couldn't have a chicken barbecue like we normally have. I mean, I had a parent, thankfully, step up and did a clothing drive for me. Um, we did a couple things, and I just did this so that I could buy pregame shirts and pregame socks. And, and, you know, we struggle at our school because we don't have any boosters. And it's some weird thing at the school. They don't allow boosters. Um, no coach, no head coach before me that I know of has, has had boosters. So fundraising is a little difficult, but again, it's just kind of something that I didn't think about being a head coach. It's, it, now I know. Now, I, I was fortunate too because I did have a, a coach on my staff who's the head wrestling coach and has coached at the school football and wrestling for a long time. And he totally stepped up and took this area. He also handled a lot of this too. I mean, he, he really took charge with the COVID protocols. He really took charge a lot of times with the fundraising. Uh, most of the time. I mean, so if you guys can get a coach on your staff that just kind of takes that stuff off your plate, my God, it's like having, it's really, it's like having a coordinator. It's really having a great coordinator. But it's even more selfless because it's not a product that you can see on Friday night. Um, you know, so that stuff is important. Parent communication was a huge one, especially this year. When everything had to be communicated, any change in practice time, and it had to be communicated early, you know, because the kids aren't in school. So, man, we would, we would, any any change in practice time, we would put, put it on Schoology. I had parents in a mass email account. I would post it on social media. Uh, parent communication was big. Now, we all know parents can be, a, again, a blessing and a curse. I, I had the parent that stepped up and did the clothing drive. I mean, she just completely was like, coach, you're under so much, like, let me do this. And I was like, do it. And she just ran with it, and oh my gosh, she did such an amazing job. She 
she made us a ton of money. Um, and you have parents like that, that you can't have enough of those parents. I, 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 you know, I got a phone call from a parent a couple weeks ago that they just called to tell me how great of a job they thought I, I did. And man, that meant a lot. I mean, it really, it really, really meant a lot. So you can't have enough of those kind of parents. Now, you also have parents that, um, this year, I had a parent, it started the second that I um, <laughs> got the job. And, you know, long, the long and short of it is, is uh, you know, thought that the, the, the player was a little bit better, a lot better than what he was. And, I mean, I won't go into too much detail over it, but we, you you will experience that. And there there was meetings that the school held and over this over this a student and, and, and you know it was student athlete and it was again in the mix of all this something that you don't think of has nothing to do with X and O's but something that you don't think of and just tough <laughs> it's just tough to deal with and of course you got the parents in the stands that are throw the ball throw what are you doing you know that you know um, our football experts but that, you know that kind of goes with the territory, but you know that was a big thing. This I want to talk about a little bit. Staying emotionally consistent and being the leader you're supposed to be. We went one and four this year. Our first game we lost fourteen to zero. We didn't play again until week four. We lost 30 to 15. The next week we played the eventual state champions. We lost 35 to 0. And then we played the eventual conference champions. We lost 50 to 7. Um, and then we won our last game. My point in telling you that is uh, I didn't have to worry about this before. When I was a coordinator, all I was worried about was offensively was scoring points. I didn't really, you know, I don't want to say I didn't care about anything else, but I cared about how many yards we got, how many points we scored, blah, 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 blah. And then, man, was I so off touch. Was I so off base. Um, this year I really had to think about how the game worked together, how the game fit together, and the personnel of my kids, or, the, and, and, or you know, my kids is, in terms of how they fit together. And made up of the personnel of my team. And I think it's easy to stay emotionally consistent when you're winning. Uh, the, this taught me a lot of lessons. Being one and four taught me a lot of lessons. Um, there was a lot of times where we were getting our ass beat. And of course I want to show my frustration. And of course... I want to show that I'm pissed, or of course I want to hang my head, right? That, those thoughts go through your in the back of your mind. I don't care who you are, or at least, or at least the you know, oh my God, this you know. But every single time, right? We're getting beat fifty to seven. Every single time, the team, other team scored on us. I'm walking all the way out to the field, picking our guys up. Every even even when it even when the last touchdown was scored. Uh, you know, I'm going out there and pick your heads up, picking my guys' heads up. You have to stay emotionally consistent. The after get a post game speech, what am I going to do? You know, of course, you want to be pissed off. Nobody likes losing. At least you shouldn't. If you do, you're in the wrong business. But I had to stay emotionally consistent. What am I going to do? Am I going to just just tear down the kids after they got beat? They know they got beat. They're not stupid. You know, they're not stupid. And we got three, four, whatever amount of weeks left. And that's hard. Up until the last game of the year, we were 0-4. And, and we had come off two ass whippings. I mean, it, that was a stretch of games. I mean, at practice every day. I had to stay the same that I was in practice from the first preseason game. And that was something I never had to do before. Never had to do it. Uh, and that is difficult. Because everybody's looking to you. Right? Everybody's looking to you for why, how are you going to take this? How are you going to take being 0-4 and having your ass whipped? Or 0-3 or whatever it may be. How are you going to act, coach, coming off the 50-7 to loss? I'm going to act like the same I always act because I'm authentic. 
but I knew that was important. Of course, it's harder to go out there when you when you you know you're not very good. But you have to stay here to keep your kids bought in. It was something that was I I, I learned on a whole nother level this year. Um, and the next thing is time. And I'm gonna go way back to the first thing I said. Uh, if you're just wanting to aspire to be a head coach for the title, this thing will chew you up and spit you out. You will spend so much time. You know, my fiance this year, she she really she got a taste of it. Like we didn't see each other. Weekends were shot. I mean, it was it was tough. It was tough. You know, we your your family time is going to be shot. I mean, seven days a week. I mean, seven days a week doing laundry. You know, in there a couple hours early, setting up for pregame, especially for COVID. Um, you know, don't even. Don't even count on all the hours that are spent on Saturday and Sunday game planning and, and like I mentioned, scouting reports and, and player grades and things of that nature. Um, so anyways, uh, listen, I won't I won't go anymore because I know this has already gotten long-winded, but um, if you enjoyed what was said or you could relate to it a little bit, uh, listen, click that subscribe button and, and, and stay connected with me so that you can um, be known or... or, or Stay up to date when, when new videos come out. All right? This is my YouTube channel, Coach E. I'm Brad Allensworth. Be simple. Play fast.